Hello my dear friends, you are on the military summary channel and today we will discuss the situation in Ukraine on the 30th of October of 2023. Today we have a lot of very interesting updates so let's start. And first we are going to start with Kupinsk direction. The Russians reported that as a result of clashes in this area, the Ukraines lost 9 soldiers wounded and killed and 7 armored vehicles including 2 tanks. During the previous 24 hours, the Ukrainians launched a very powerful offensive operation including significant number of armored vehicles. And basically the Ukrainians were moving from Petropavlovka, they got on the road and they were moving along the road trying not to discover and not to show the minefields. They were trying to move in the direction of Arlyanka, trying to attack the Russians uh, from the top, from the north, and to attack the Russian flanks in this area. The Russians managed, as you remember, uh, establish a foothold on the west of this road. Uh, for that attack, the Ukrainians, as I told you, were using a significant number of armored vehicles. During that movement, the Ra Ukrainians were attacking the Russian positions on the north because the movement was very risky. The Ukrainians were moving very close to the main Russian positions. But all these things, all these tactics didn't help the Ukrainians to complete the operation successfully. During the, that attack, the Ukrainians lost every single tank that was involved in that operation. For example, on this video, you can see, according to information, we have the T-64 tank. And as a result of uh, uh, counter anti-tank missile, the tank first was damaged and after that the tank was destroyed. As you can see, there is a secondary detonation. We see that Ukrainian uh, tank drivers start uh, running away from this area. Uh, the, the, that was not the only tank. Uh, behind that tank there were two more tanks heading in the same direction. And on this video we can see two Leopards heading next, to, heading in the direction of Arlyanka. Uh, they, we got the same story on this direction as well. The Russians uh, were bombing and attacking this territory and mainly the Russians were using anti-tank missiles. And as a result of another strike, the Ukrainians lost Leopard. The Leopard wasn't destroyed as a result of one strike. The Leopard was damaged and the Ukrainian tank drivers also managed to survive and to run away. Another tank, as soon as um, and the Ukrainians realized that the entire operation failure, he uh, turned back and started running away. But the Russians are saying that he could and run very far, he was destroyed as well. So that was another operation of the Ukrainian forces, another counter-offensive operation of the Ukrainians in the vicinity of Arlyanka, in the square between Stepovo and Novoselka, Kislovka, Katlerovka, Ivanovka, Yehidna, Arlyanka. So, one more time, there are very heavy clashes in this area. Uh, as, as now we can have 100% proofs that the Russians managed to dig in deeper in this area, they have uh, prepared the foothold for further offensive operation. Maybe the Ukrainians will make more attempts to counter-attack and if another counter-attack will be defeated, the Russians will continue their encirclement operation in direction of Stepovo and Vasilka, trying to penetrate the Ukraine defense bells from the north. Now we are moving to Liman front line. We got some details, some updates from this area. The Russians reported that as a result of clashes in this area, the Ukrainians lost 70 soldiers, 3 armored vehicles. During the previous 24 hours, the main clashes took place in Kriminaya forest. The Russian sources published a video of a storming operation and how the Russian special unit Ahmad, uh, under support and cover of Russian artillery forces, were bombing and attacking the Ukrainian positions and basically storming them. And according to this video, as a result of offensive operation, the Ahmad special unit uh, managed to clear this territory and to capture another Ukrainian stronghold. The most important thing that we need to understand about this territory is that these strongholds change its owner for almost every single week, twice, twice, twice a week, or something like this. So nothing special. Uh, we need to wait more because when talking about criminal, the front line is in this area is static, and the main purpose of both sides, either the Russians and the Ukrainians, is to uh, like reduce uh, each other's manpower as much as possible. There is no need to capture strongholds because it's too difficult. Difficult. But to reduce the manpower is the thing that both sides can do in this direction. We haven't received anything from Sivers, but we have a lot of very interesting geolocations and videos from Bakhmut. After a very short uh, like operational pause in this area, the Ukrainians managed to regroup in this direction and they started more attempts to attack the Russian positions. The main clashes took place along the railways between Bakhmut, Artemovsk, Andreevka, Kudumovka, Zaryanovka. The Ukrainians all over the entire 
railways tried to cross this area and to establish the foothold on the Russian side of the railways. And according to geolocations and according to all these videos, as I understand, the Ukrainians were pretty successful. They managed to force the Russians to step back further from the railways. The Ukrainians managed to create a foothold along entire railways from Artemovsk, let's say from the north of Klishevka to Kurdumovka Zaryanovka. No matter the losses, as you can see, the Russians were bombing the Ukrainians heavily. But uh, they, they, all these bombardments uh, lead to some losses from the Ukrainian side, but uh, these bombardments uh, didn't force the Ukrainians to step back. So everything clear with Northern Klishevka direction, but uh, very interesting details are coming from Andreevka area. As you can see, the map has been updated. I believe that we can even move now Andreev can the complete Russian Ukrainian control because now this area is obviously under the Ukrainians and they do have some foothold on that uh, side of the railways and uh, the Russians uh, we remember that there were a lot of geolocations and the Russians uh, took a decision to counter attack in this area and the Russians concentrated collected some forces in Zelenopolia and they tried to send some like reconnaissance team or let's say some uh, some storming troops troops to clear the Russian uh, side of the railways. So that was the Russian plan. So they're trying to move like from Azarianovka to Andreevka and to clear the trenches, to clear the three lines from the Ukrainian forces who recently managed to cross the area and to dig a little bit deeper in this area. But something went wrong. Uh, the Ukrainian sources published the video how the Russian like uh, assault troopers were got in ambush and basically were destroyed. The Russians managed to land the infantry, but they haven't even managed to uh, send their vehicles back as the Ukrainians started bombing and shelling the, Ru the Ukrainians, the Russians with mortar systems, with artillery. And as a result of those bombardments, significant number of Russian forces probably were wounded, even killed. So the Russians haven't managed to clear this territory, and the Ukrainians, as a result of their those operations managed to dig in deeper and to prepare more a stronger foothold in this area and currently they are ready to continue offensive operation further basically to develop the foothold to the south obviously further to the west and of course to the north so we're gonna follow this situation because this foothold is getting more and more interesting the Russians reported that as a result of clashes on entire Donetsk direction, the Ukrainians lost 285 soldiers, uh, 5 armored vehicles and 3 artillery systems. The level of losses is not so big, but much bigger in comparison with the two days before. Yesterday, the Ukrainians lost just 110 soldiers and the day before, yesterday, 160. So almost in two or three times, losses became uh, bigger more now we're talking about Avdiivka area. We have a lot of geolocations, but we don't have a lot of videos. The interesting things that we can uh, mention is that Ukrainians have redeployed Leopards in this area. The author of this video says that this is the Leopard that goes somewhere in Avdiivka. The only thing that we can use for geolocation is the, uh, say, railway infrastructure. This is like railway uh, things that goes along the railway. So I have added this icon softly that the Ukrainian Leopard was moving somewhere, let's say, along the railways heading next to Krasnogorovka. So something like this. From the other side, we got... Uh, almost the same video from the Russian side the Russians were using Terminators and the Russians are using Terminator massively on exactly on the front frontline currently the sources are saying that this is the most not powerful but the most strongest armored vehicle in the special military operation you need to spend a lot of time if you want to destroy this machine uh, the Russians are feeling themselves pretty safe and pretty secure this machine has uh, like machine gun obviously and this uh, tank uh, this armored vehicle of course has also anti-tank missiles so uh, if you ask my opinion i would say that if leopard will start fighting with terminator there are very high chances that terminator will destroy leopard easily because of like uh, anti-tank missiles on board so the russians and the ukrainians as you can see are trying to use the most effective the most effective the most powerful uh, the, mo the the strongest uh, type of armored vehicles they have and they're going to be very heavy clashes obviously as we discussed in the previous videos the russians as a result of clashes managed to answer severna from the south at least some buildings were captured maybe the ukrainians have already counter attack and forced the russians to step back the russians managed to capture more true lines uh, in the fields between toninka severna lastochkina avdievke vadiana and the russians currently 
uh, have some progress on the line between Tirikon and Krutaya Balka. The sources are saying that the Russians currently are moving or try to develop and to get their forces closer to Avdiivka itself. And for these purposes, the Russians currently are trying to establish control over the fields, three lines that located between the Russian territory and Avdiivka itself. So the next phase of uh, Avdiivka news operation is the battles for these fields and for these three lines. The Russians are trying to get as close as possible to the Ukrainians and to be on the distance of, uh, let's say, mortar, like um, infantry mortar strike. They need to be very close to the city, to this industrial area. Uh, the Ukrainians also from their side try to slow down the Russians and uh, they're doing this job also uh, pretty well. The Ukrainians published a lot of videos of FPV drones bombardments as you can see the Ukrainians. Uh, sometimes I'm, I have a feeling that the Ukrainians don't have artillery systems at all. They have HIMARS and they have FPV drones. I don't remember the uh, geolocations and the videos of the usage by the Ukrainians of uh, let's say uh, M777 Howitzers. If I see M77 Howitzer some wind geolocation that means that the Russians managed to discover another Howitzer and to destroy this Howitzer with Lancet or FPV drone strike. I haven't seen Howitzer, Ukraine Howitzer in the works. So, like, if I see that means that this Howitzer is already destroyed or is going to be destroyed in a few seconds because Lancet is flying in, uh, against this uh, type of weapon. Uh, the Ukrainians understand the risk and the situation of Dievka, uh, so that's why they try to control this territory. And as I told you, the Ukrainians have redeployed the most powerful, strongest uh, forces in this area, the most modern Western uh, vehicles, tanks, armored vehicles. The Russians are doing the same. So the battle for Dievka is going to be very bloody and very heavy, but not so long as many experts are saying, probably three, four months and that's it. Now we are moving to south, the nearest direction. We continue receiving very interesting details from Novomikhailovka, as I told you, my favorite front line. Uh, I like expect that this is going to be a key region for the Russians in this area, and the entire like situation in Ukraine depends on this small village. For some reason, I have like a third feeling or something like this. And the Ukrainians today so published the video how the Russians were clearing this territory with tanks with demining equipment. On this video we see the Russian convoy with infantry and Russian tanks heading from the south in the direction of Nova Mikhailovka. We see how the, Rus how the Ukrainians were trying to bomb the Russians, how the Russians managed to land the infantry. Infantry started taking their positions along the road trying to secure themselves against the Ukrainian artillery fire. Some vehicles continue moving further along the road in the direction of Nova Mikhailovka. Some Russian armored vehicles turned to, to, let's say, to the the left and start moving along the three lines trying to clear this territory from mines and to secure the passage for upcoming infantry and assault troopers. So basically this video has shown us this, the following. The Russians using the convoy were moving from the south in this direction. Somewhere in this area the Russians stopped. Uh, some forces continue proceed moving further uh, to the north. Uh, I don't think that they were planning to move very far and some Russian tanks uh, turned to the left or to the west and started moving uh, along this true line to the west trying to clear this territory and to completely secure this area. So obviously the Russians next go is not to storm Nova Mikhailovka. Obviously, maybe some forces in this group is, are planning to do this. But currently, the main important goal for the Russians is to establish control over this fortification area. And the Russians have completely prepared this uh, foothold in front of this uh, fortification. They have demined this area. And I believe that this week we are going to see some attempts from the Russian sources forces to storm this area. And if the Russians are able to do this, of course, the situation for the Ukrainians from the south of Nova Mikhailovka is going to get even worse than uh, we have this right now. This will allow the Russians to, this will open the Russians possibilities to establish full 100% control over these territories and this is in this foothold if the Russians are able to capture this territory will mean uh, is enough for establishing full control of Novomikhailovka and basically the fall of Novomikhailovka. But of course the Russians have some problems on the north. On the north, They still haven't managed to clear this territory completely. They're, these forces are out of timing. They're not like in 
doing everything according to schedule they miss the deadlines but as i understand by the time the russians capture the necessary footholds on the south the russian forces on the north also will complete their mission and then we're going to see the storming of novomikhailovka from two sides i expect this operation to start uh, this year the russians reported that as a result of clashes in this area counter artillery duels and so on the ukrainians lost uh, 100 soldiers four armored vehicles and one artillery system um, get sent by on this video we can see the usage of new russian uh, on set with ai uh, self-navigation uh, now it doesn't matter the situation in this area this target will be hit by the russians because their ai uh, self-navigation though so the russians as you can see continue improvement of their forces and they're bringing more and more modern weapon to the combat line when talking about ravenka we haven't received almost anything from this area there are almost no clashes at all the Parozhye area uh, the develops also very interesting we have a lot of geolocations and the most important that ukrainians continue their offensive operation on the west of robotina trying to maintain their positions and probably as a result of ukrainian offensive operation they managed to capture another tree line on the west of robotina and they got one tree line closer to Kopony and Rivne. So uh, I'm trying to say that as a result of offensive operation, uh, as I understand, the Ukrainians established control over this another yellow cloud. So what is the purpose of this attack? We may ask. Uh, and another evidence of that progress is that the Russians published the video how they were bombing this territory with multi-launch rocket systems. Uh, these fields were under very heavy fire, and uh, the Russians tried to stop the Ukrainians, not to allow them to bring more reserves and so on. So what is the what were the purposes of all these attacks? Another video. And the thing is that currently, if we will zoom out from this territory, we're going to see that Ukrainians prepared a very long foothold, a very, like, let's say, long uh, front line and not just to attack Kopony or to continue further to Salutka Balka or Lino Prokopovka. Uh, during the previous months, the Ukrainians had few areas of their main activity. And these are the, let's say, Rabotina itself and uh, this area between Kopany and uh, um, Novodanilovka and the second area, Novandreevka, Sherbaki, Nistrianka. So three areas of concentration of Ukrainian forces. Let's reduce the number of updates. So basically, the Ukrainians during the previous months managed to create, uh, to concentrate their forces of different types, of different um, brigades, different like specializations and so on. They managed to concentrate their forces along this yellow line so as you can see this is a very long yellow line they managed to stretch their forces they managed to concentrate significant number of forces the last of their reserves and as i understand the ukrainians currently are planning to start broad frontline attacks along at, uh, against not along against lots of cities the Ukrainians will attack Mirna, the Ukrainians will attack Nistirianka, the Ukrainians will attack between Nistirianka and Kopony, the Ukrainians will attack Kopony from the north, the Ukrainians will try to attack Kopony in the central part, the Ukrainians will try to attack Kopony from the south, and of course the Ukrainians will try to attack Kopony between, let's say, Kopony, Rivne and um, Novoprokopovka. And this is the broad frontline attack, this is going to be the final attack of the Ukrainians this year. Uh, the Russians obviously also control the situation, they see everything but the question is not whether the russians can see this or not the question is whether the russians are ready and they can repel this attack and defeat the ukrainians one more time because if the ukrainians um, can achieve some results obviously they're not going to continue their offensive operation further to let's say takmak because uh, the they don't have this time but by taking nistirianka kopony the ukrainians will be able to create a very strong foothold for the next year and the next year they will have a foothold and the bridgehead and the base to start everything from the beginning because if the ukrainians are defeated they will lose robotina by the end of this year at least i as i understand this situation exactly like this the russians reported that as a result of clashes on this area the ukrainians lost 220 soldiers seven armored vehicles two tanks including one leopard and four artillery systems so basically the level of losses of the ukrainians for uh, the previous 24 hours is on the same level as the ukrainian losses we saw in june and july during the most active phase of ukraine greatest counteroffensive operation so currently let's say 
the today is the same losses as the Ukrainians had, let's say, on the 4th of, of June. Of course, less, much less armored vehicles were destroyed, but when talking about the manpower, almost the same level. So something big is happening right now, but we are not getting a lot of updates, just the Ministry of Defense report and few geolocations. Now we're moving to Kherson direction. New general, new commander of tactical group Dnieper of Russian Federation tried to fix the issues and the problems that were created by the previous commander in this area. The Russians are bombing the Dnipro Islands in the area between Krynki and the Ukrainian positions heavily with all types of weapons uh, the Russians have. But the Ukrainians also realize that they have chances and that they need to increase the pressure. The Ukrainians during the previous 24 hours tried to suppress and destroy the Russian armored vehicles on the Russian bank of the river with FPV drones. They have destroyed a significant number of tanks or at least damaged them. And currently, as you can see, according to the focus of Ukraine FPV drones, the Ukrainians are planning to open third or maybe fourth foothold on the Russian bank of the river and this is going to be the, sea, the village by the name of Karsunki. So at least they have already started the preparation using FPV drones. So at least these, all these evidence, all these things um, um, shows me, reminds me some Ukrainian pattern and the next step of this pattern is another landing operation with attempt to capture this territory. And if the Russians lose this bridgehead also this is going to be uh, this is going to be a disaster, to tell the truth, but let's see, let's follow what is going to be next. The Russians continue destroying the Ukrainian forces uh, uh, on the south of Pridniprovska. We also got have the video of fire anomalies, all these territories under very heavy fire. The Russians use all type of weapon they have to destroy the Ukrainians and not to allow them to concentrate the critical mass before the next wave of attack. So we'll see what is going to be next. The Russians reported that as a result of clashes on Kherson direction, the Ukrainians lost 70 soldiers, 3 armored vehicles and 3 artillery systems. The level of losses is heavy, obviously, it's not like 20 or 30 soldiers as uh, we uh, as in the regular day, it's 70 soldiers, uh, Three armored vehicles and a lot of artillery systems. The Russians managed to discover also a very big ammo depot somewhere like in the Ukrainian rear and as a result of Tornado S strike that uh, ammo depot was destroyed. Now we are moving to Odessa. The Russians published the video how they were bombing and attacking the Ukraine positions with Onyx missiles. As a result of those strikes they managed to destroy the fire position of Ukrainian missiles because as you know during the previous 24 hours the Ukrainians launched a full-scale missile offensive rocket operation using significant number of different types of missiles drones against Crimea trying to penetrate the Russians defense belt but the Ukrainians were completely defeated and not even a single missile managed to penetrate the Russian air defense and today uh, for the first time since the beginning of the special military operation I got the feeling that the Russians managed to establish complete air defense superiority above Crimea and from now on the Ukrainians don't have even a single chance to penetrate the Russians air defense belt but just if they are like like uh, if they wake up one day and they wake up at a lucky day and the Russians uh, wake up at unlucky day maybe only this day the Ukrainians have some chances to penetrate the Russians and the Ukrainians try to use uh, different types of missiles they try to combine if you remember a few days ago they tried to stress and to test and overload these air defense with drones around 40 drones um, the Ukrainians used for those purposes all of them were shot down or uh, were like um, destroyed with electronic warfare and uh, after that the Ukrainians managed to discover the Russian air defense positions and now they tried to launch a very powerful attack. The Russians destroyed storm shadow missiles, the Russians destroyed attacks missiles, a lot of drones and so on. Furthermore the Ukrainians do have problems with uh, aircrafts uh, because they, a lot of aircrafts were destroyed since the beginning of this month because of new Russian missile Air-37M um, and also the Russians are saying that the Ukrainians managed to upgrade their Su-27 aircrafts for launching storm shadows because even a half a year ago the Ukrainians have just Su-24 who were able to attack the Russians with storm shadow but now they have increased the types of aircrafts that can carry this type of missile. Obviously the Ukrainians will try, will continue improvements of their forces. The question is whether it's, go it's going to help them or they, they have wasted their time. And that's it for today. Military Summary Channel reminds we condemn any violence in the world. Thank you for your watching. Subscribe to my channel. Put your likes to my Patreon. And have a good day. Bye-bye.